The internet and the creator economy have made it possible for almost anyone to make media that can be consumed worldwide. And this is a great thing, kind of. On the one hand, this means that different perspectives can be shared and heard, and it means people can make a living doing what they love. On the other hand, it has also led to a severe decrease in the quality of audio that people are consuming. But that's why I'm making this video, to help you understand some of the essential techniques that professionals have used for decades to make professional quality audio productions, and how you can implement those same techniques into your own podcast, live streams, or videos, and start sounding professional too. Thanks to Mackie for sponsoring this video and supporting audio education. Mackie has a couple of all-in-one mixer interfaces, the DLZ Creator and the DLZ Creator XS, that make it easy to achieve high-quality audio so you can focus on what you do best without getting too wrapped up in the technical details. But whether you choose to use one of these mixers or not, as always, you're going to get value out of this video. So let's get started. When you're listening to a podcast or a video on YouTube, there's nothing worse than having to turn up the volume super loud to hear what's being said, and then being immediately bombarded with distorted sound when it gets too loud. If you can fix this, you're going to be 75% of the way to sounding more professional. It all starts with the microphone preamp level. This is the first setting you should set once you've verified that your microphone is properly sending audio to the mixer or interface that you're using. A lot of beginners will just kind of talk quietly into the mic with a quick check one, two, crank up the preamp gain, and start start rolling. But then, when the show starts, they start speaking much louder into the microphone, and that's when you hear distortion. Instead, I'd recommend speaking into the mic with as much energy and level as you think you'll have when speaking during the show. At that level, set the mic preamp so that the level meter on your mixer or your recording software reads about minus 18 or minus 12 dBFS. And that's exactly what the DLZ Creator mixers do when using the listen and set it for me feature. During the initial mic setup process, I can tell it which type of microphone I'm using, such as a condenser or dynamic mic, and the device will automatically apply phantom power if needed and set the preamp gain based on my voice and the level coming from the microphone. See, in digital audio, you'll most often see a full scale meter that ranges from negative infinity at the bottom to zero at the top. It will sound perfect all the way up to zero dB, but once you exceed zero dB, it's going to sound awful because the top of the waveform just gets clipped off. So the key consideration when setting the preamp level is that the loudest parts of the audio do not reach zero dB full scale. Leaving 12 to 18 dB of headroom means you'll have a good buffer before distortion will occur. If you're someone who speaks with a very wide dynamic range, with a big difference between the quietest and loudest parts, stick around because I've got a tip for you later in the video. First, I want to mention that mic technique also plays a big role in setting proper levels with microphone preamps. I think we all intuitively understand that sound picked up by a microphone will be louder when the microphone is closer and will be quieter with more distance. For this reason, you should strive to keep a consistent distance between you and the mic. If you set the preamp gain while the microphone is a foot away from you, and then you put the microphone only three to six inches away during the show, it's going to be a lot louder and you run the risk of distorting your audio. The solution is to maintain a consistent distance from the microphone during sound check and the show. And if you want to be a true professional about it, you can adjust your distance from the mic when you speak quietly, moving closer, and when you shout or laugh loudly, moving further away. As a general guideline, I'd recommend putting the mic about two to six inches away from the person speaking. The more distance, the more gain that's needed. If you speak loudly and project your voice into the mic, you'll need less preamp gain, but people who speak quietly will need more gain. This isn't a big problem with the Onyx 80 preamps in these mixers or with the preamps in most gear. If the person is quiet, they can move a bit closer to the mic, but later in the video, I'll explain how distance from the mic can affect tone as well as level. But for now, shoot for about two to six inches and set a good gain level with about 12 to 18 dB of headroom. I have a certain aesthetic in my videos where I don't wear headphones, partly because headphones make me look like a dork. But there have been times when I've recorded a full video only to find that there were points in the recording where my voice exceeded zero dB and clipped. If I monitored my voice and headphones during these situations, I would have heard the problem and adjusted the mic preamp or talked quieter. So I'd recommend wearing headphones if you look cool in headphones. 
and you should probably wear them even if you look dorky in them too. This will help to ensure that the levels are consistent and your signal is free of distortion or noise. And it also helps a lot if you have multiple people having a conversation, because while talking over one another in a normal conversation sounds natural, it can be really annoying to someone listening to the recording or the stream. If you and your guests wear headphones, you'll be less likely to talk over one another, and the show will be a lot more enjoyable to listen to. In a professional broadcast, there will often be a team of people listening to the audio and adjusting things in real time to ensure that everything sounds consistent and high quality. Even if there isn't a team of people, there will usually be a mixer that the host can use to adjust the level of their own voice and the guest's voices. But if you're just starting out, this can be kind of intimidating. I mean, you're probably already focused on making the content as good as it can be, and focusing on the sound quality can be just another thing to think about. This is why it's nice to have a mixer like the Mackie DLZ Creator, because it offers a fader for each microphone that you can use to increase or decrease the level of each person as they change their volume and distance from the microphone. In fact, the DLZ Creator also has an auto mix feature that will take care of that for you. Again, it may be easy to understand things when people naturally vary their speaking voice in person, but your listeners are driving a car or sitting in a noisy environment, so it's much better to provide them with a smooth listening experience. In addition to making the volume level consistent throughout the show, you also want your show to be more or less the same level as other shows. The first indicator of an amateur production is when you have to turn up the volume level of your system way louder than normal. Now, we've already left 12 to 18 dB of headroom to prevent clipping, but most shows will have peaks at about minus one dB full scale. We don't want to set our preamp gain that high, because then we'll only have one dB of headroom before clipping. At the same time, we do want to do our best to maximize the level of our audio by the time it reaches the listener. Depending on the platform you're streaming or uploading to, it may help you out a bit here. Various platforms use various techniques and standards for normalizing the level of audio so listeners can have a consistent experience from show to show. But some platforms won't turn you up putting you at risk of sounding much quieter than the competition. This is where you'll find a compressor helpful. A compressor has two primary functions. For one, a compressor can alter the dynamic range of audio passing through it. When the signal level exceeds the defined threshold, the compressor will reduce the gain of the signal by the specified amount. For example, if you set a compressor with a ratio of 2 to 1 and a threshold of minus 18 dB, the compressor will reduce the gain by 1 dB for every 2 dB that the signal goes past the minus 18 dB threshold. I've got a full video explaining the mechanics of compression that you can find linked below. This can be useful to turn down the loud parts in relation to the quiet parts, and then you can use the makeup gain knob to turn everything back up. That's somewhat helpful for smoothing out the inconsistencies in level throughout the show. These Mackie DLZ Creator mixers have a built-in compressor on each channel. If I turn down the threshold so that the peaks of the signal just reach or exceed it, then I can turn up the signal and effectively reclaim the headroom that we left ourselves earlier. However, the second function of a compressor goes hand in hand with the first. That is, that a compressor creates distortion in the audio when the signal exceeds the threshold. This distortion is not usually as abrupt or displeasing as clipping, but it's still something to be aware of. This is how the pros do it. We set the preamp gain to leave some headroom, and then we use a compressor or limiter to control the inconsistencies in the audio in a way that sounds good and results in an output level that's appropriate for distribution. A mixer like DLZ Creator is helpful for doing all of this live, but the same thing can be done in post-production if you're recording a show to be uploaded later. In this case, you can record each voice to a separate track in the DAW recording software and then control the level of each track separately to account for any inconsistencies. You can then use a compressor or limiter to bring the overall signal level up to the target. If you're able to control the level of your audio and limit the amount of distortion, you will already have a really great sounding show. But here are a few additional tips for polishing the sound quality even further. First, there's the tone of your voice. You want your voice to sound good, not too bassy and not too thin. This starts with mic technique. In addition to making your voice louder, your voice will also sound more bassy the closer you get to the microphone, thanks to the proximity effect. In other words, the distance between you and your mic will impact the frequency balance of your voice. If you want a very boomy sound, you can get very close to the mic, 
And if you'd rather have a more natural sound, try putting a bit more distance between you and the mic. Once the microphone signal reaches the mixer or interface, you can take a few additional steps towards shaping the tone. First, you might want to do some cleanup. Your microphone probably captures frequencies between 20 hertz and 20 kilohertz, the full range of human hearing, but the human voice only ranges from about 100 hertz and up. All of those really low frequencies are simply unnecessary. It's common to use a high pass filter to remove the frequencies below 100 hertz or so when recording spoken word. To do this, you just need an EQ with a high pass filter sometimes called HPF. I'd recommend engaging the high pass filter and increasing the frequency until you start to hear a thinning out of the voice and then reduce the frequency a few clicks so you aren't really changing the tone of the voice, just removing what's not needed. You can take this a step further by cutting any frequencies that sound out of place or boosting frequencies that seem to be underrepresented. This part takes some practice and if you don't hear any problems, you can just leave it as it is. Sometimes the sound of someone's voice can sound over overly sibilant, where the S and T sounds are unpleasant. You can try cutting the area between 4 kHz and 12 kHz with an EQ to fix this, but that often has the effect of making the rest of the voice sound dull. Ideally, you can use a tool that will only reduce the level of these frequencies when the person is saying a S or a T sound. One such tool is a de-esser. A de-esser is a compressor that only listens to the frequencies within the sibilance range. When the person speaking isn't saying the S or T sound, the de-esser ideally does nothing. But when those S's and T's come up, the de-esser engages and pulls down the level to avoid harshness. Tools like compressors and de-essers are called dynamics processors because they control the dynamics of the audio. Another common dynamics processor is a noise gate. Now, it's always best to make your room as quiet as possible before recording. Turn off any fans or loud machines if possible and keep the distance between you and the microphone relatively close so that your voice is considerably louder than any noise. But if you still have some noise that you need to control, a noise gate can be helpful. Instead of turning the audio down when the signal level goes above the threshold, like a compressor would, a noise gate will turn the audio down when the signal level goes below the threshold. This means you can set the threshold so that the gate is open when you're speaking and closed when you stop speaking, which can help control noise and leakage into other microphones in the room. You'll find links in the description if you want to check out the Mackie DLZ Creator and DLZ Creator XS. In any case, try implementing some of these techniques into your setup. It's a good thing that we can all make content, but we want to preserve the quality of audio at the same time. In the next video, I'll show you how to eliminate echo when talking with remote guests using a technique called Mix Minus that's also built into these mixers. I'll see you there.